something seemed miraculous happens this time of the year. Just when we get close to Christmas, just everything just seems, in my mind, thing, we become, things seem to slow down a little bit. We begin to become reflective. We begin to think. So this morning, I want to talk to you about Christmas being a time for time for warmth, Christmas time and warmth. And, and many times when we go to the Christmas story, we find ourselves going to Luke chapter 2. It's probably one of the favorite ones as I grew up. Most times we always went to Luke chapter 2, and we read the Christmas story. And I'm not going to read that to you this morning, but, but the Bible does say in Luke chapter 2 and verse 6 that the time came for the baby to be born. Lord, this morning, I pray that your word would be a word that would be so powerful this morning, that your spirit would drive its truth home into our hearts, and I pray, God, for the warmth just to sweep over us this morning, in your wonderful name we ask it, amen, amen. It's always so difficult after the singing Christmas tree, isn't it? I mean, we're such a rush and such a excitement, and sometimes on the body says, okay, now you got to regroup. I'd love to be able to put that tree on all of December. <laughs> I'd better be quiet. I'd love to have that adrenaline rush all the month of December. Let's put it on November. In fact, let's just leave it up all year long. But Luke chapter 2 and verse 6, it says the time came for the baby, for the baby to be born. The time came. It was time for prophecy and promises to be fulfilled. It was also time for God to express his love in the most unique and unusual way. It was time for an impossibility to become possible, and it was time for the Christmas story characters, you know, the shepherds and the wise men, the heavenly host and the innkeeper and the barn animals. It was time for all of them to take their stage, take their place in this story. It's time for Mary to begin to ponder all these things in her heart. Time, time. It was time for Joseph to simply believe. I, 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 I admire Joseph. I, I look at Joseph, and, and it was time for him to simply believe. And I bet that was hard because men are calculators. I'm a calculator. I'm an analyzer. We fit things together. I go in my garage, and I fit things together. I have a pail of, of nuts and bolts, and, and, and I always, every time there's extras, I put it in there. And when I find a bolt, I have a bolt that I've got to find a nut for, I go through, I want to find the right fit. That's what guys do. We, we're calculators. We want to make sure things are correct. And that was what was going through, I believe, Joseph's mind as well. Well, things fit together. We like things to fit together nicely. But this didn't fit. This just did not fit for Joseph, and this required faith when it didn't fit, and faith when it felt like a fable, faith when it felt like imaginary fiction, faith when it felt senseless and folly, faith when it felt like, like a fog, a clouded fog. From this time forward, mankind would always and forever scratch his head saying, I just can't understand this story completely. It boggles my mind. We try to digest it. We try to read it. We try to fathom it. We try to put it together in our minds, and our little brains can't receive it all. I'm reminded of Paul, the apostle. He wrote in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7, he said, I'm praying for you, Ephesians. I'm praying for you, and he's praying for us too. The Bible's for all of us. He said, I pray that you'll grasp how long, how wide, how high, how deep the love of Christ is. He prayed because he knew it was difficult for us to understand it. He prayed that they would know this love that goes away beyond their knowledge and that they would go on to be filled with the fullness of God. If Christmas tells us anything, it tells us that we can receive what we don't understand. We can receive what we don't understand. It's time for fresh reception. Advent is about that. It's about us freshly receiving Jesus Christ all over again, a fresh revelation. I was sitting there this morning as we're 
or standing, one or the other, reading or singing Christmas carols. And I remember I was thinking in my mind, I've sung these carols ever since I was just a little boy sitting in the front seat of the church in Calvary Pentecostal Church in Toronto, Nova Scotia. The teacher would say, Gary, come over here and sit with me. You're being bad. And she'd say, come on over here. And I'd go over there and sit by her. So she'd keep me calm. But I remember singing the wonderful Christmas carols. All these years later, we're still singing the Christmas carols, and they still mean so much, and there still must be a fresh revelation, a fresh reception of Jesus Christ again today. Even though we don't understand everything about it, Christmas is about us receiving what we don't completely comprehend in our minds. I just love the Christmas story. The Christmas story is filled with direct invitations and real-life applications. It's a toasty, warm story. It's a loving story. See, it's time to come on in. It's time to come on in and enjoy the heat of Christmas time when it's not minus 30 outside, but minus 3. And when it's cold outside and it's going to get colder, January's coming, February's coming, but so is spring, thank the Lord. But Christmas is a time for us to come on in from the cold. Come on and experience the warmth of Christmas. When I was a teenager back in Nova Scotia, I did, my dad, we didn't have a garage. And I would, I would always been working on cars, and so I'd be out there in December, January, and the winter months didn't matter. I'd have cars jacked up and everything thrown underneath it just to protect myself. And I'd be crawling under there. My dad would open up the door sometimes. Gary, aren't you cold out there? Aren't you cold? No. And I wasn't. But now I'm just like my dad. As I got older, maybe the blood got a little bit thinner. But now I mind the cold. Now I put on all these heavy coats just to win my insulated garage. Because I don't like being cold. I like being warm and warm and warm and warm and warm some more. So this year, what I, did, I bought a, I don't like snow blowing when it's cold. I like to move snow when it's warm. And so I bought an older Toyota 4Runner, 4x4, four four, big tires, 33-inch tires. Ooh, I like it. It's a man's vehicle. It, someone had put a lift, lift kit in it. I put a plow on that, so I'm going to plow in a heated cabin. So a little snow we had a little while ago. I said, this gives me an opportunity to try out this plow on this new Toyota 4Runner. And I cranked up the heat, shut all the windows. Something else cranked up in there, too. There must have been a mouse that was hiding, died inside that vent. Whoa! I've never, I knew what it was. I knew what it was. This can't be good. And so then I had to roll down the window, and I was cold again. My wife said, be careful, be careful. So now when I use it, I've got to put on a, what are those masks. People think that I'm a thief or something, but now I gotta, I'm going to have heat one way or another. I'll just put on that, what do you call that thing? Dust mask? I should know. I use one all the time, but I'm just having a heat wave vacant spot in my mind. But Christmas is about warmth, isn't it? Christmas is about coming in from the cold and feeling that heat. Oh, Christmas is about fireplaces. Oh, we know that. Every time, every time you see a Christmas story, you see a fireplace. You see the socks hanging over the fireplace. The, the fire's on. It's warm. Christmas is about hot apple cider. Christmas is about, is about hot chocolate. Christmas is about candles that seem to warm up the largest room. Christmas is about the warmth of light strategically hung in our homes. Christmas is about warm family embraces. Oh, Christmas is about hot turkey dinners. And Christmas is about a nice hot nap afterwards and just going to sleep after you ate way too much turkey. Oh, Christmas is about warm smiles and warm giving of our time. People just smile a whole lot more Christmas time, and they want to give and give. And this year, our singing Christmas tree was a giving year. We just gave and gave and gave and gave away. And something about Christmas just makes us warm all over, and we just love to give and give, give our time, give our resources, give our money. We just want to bless, 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 and bless some more. Christmas is about cooling down our sanctuary because we know that during the singing Christmas tree, that we're going to pack it out, and the heat's going to rise, and the hottest place in the building is in the balcony. 
Oh, was it hot up there one presentation. We packed in, I think, 505 people just seated, not including everyone else involved. We sat 505 people, and I went up there, man, I got hit with a blanket of heat. But Christmas is about warmth, being warm all over. Yes, it's time for Christmas. And Christmas comes every year to draw people in from the cold, to draw people in from freezing and shivering heartbreak, freezing and shivering loneliness and bad memories and discouragement and fear and frustration and confusion to come on in from freezing and shivering, wandering and questions of life. It's far too cold to stay out there when Jesus says, come on in and get warm. We're invited to come in and experience the warmth of Jesus and his love. Look at Matthew chapter 1, 21. She'll give birth to a son. And you're going to give him a name, Jesus, because he'll save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. She'll give birth to a son. You'll give him the name Jesus. You talk about love, an expression of love. So this morning, first of all, I want to share with you what does Christmas mean for heaven? Ever thought of it that way? What does Christmas mean for heaven? If we're thinking about (coughs) what Christmas means for heaven, we've got to find ourselves going to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Well, what Christmas means for heaven. Christmas means that Jesus gave up. Chapter 2 and verse 6 of Philippians says, Who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used in his own advantage. The King James Version says that Jesus didn't hang on, selfishly grasp his glory. But we read that Christmas means that Jesus gave up all his splendor, all his glory. He gave it up. Christmas also means that Jesus came down. Philippians 2 and verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. Christmas means that Jesus came down. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1 and verse 14 says, He gave up, He came down. And Christmas also means that Jesus understands. Chapter 2 and verse 7, Rather, He made Himself nothing but by taking the very nature of, the, of a servant being made in human likeness. He became like us. No one can charge Jesus with not understanding what we go through. Sometimes people shake their fists and say, but Jesus, you don't know. Jesus says, I do know. The Bible says he was made in human likeness. He came down like it, like, and he dwelt. He walked the face of this earth. He went through struggles and pains. He knew what rejection was all about. He knew what pain was all about. Oh, yeah. No one can charge the Lord with not knowing. But he came down. He understands. Christmas also means that Jesus gave all. Chapter 2 and verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. He gave everything. What more could he give? He gave his own very life. He gave it all. Christmas also means that Jesus has a name above all names. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9 says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name that is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus has a name. Christmas means that he's got a name which is above every other name. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says his name shall be called Wonderful, <coughs> Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. He's got a name, a powerful name. Acts chapter 4 and 12 says salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name given whereby man must be saved. His name is Jesus. He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only one that can give eternal life. And we just need to stand upon that word as the days go on and as life goes on. And as the years go on, we still must stand upon that name and declare that everyone needs Jesus Christ to be saved. Everyone needs the Lord Jesus Christ in their hearts to give them eternal life. And that's why we were so excited with sharing the singing Christmas tree this past weekend, because we got to share Jesus. 
to people who otherwise would never darken the doors of a church. Thank the Lord they were here. Thank the Lord that we were given an opportunity to say, he's got a name. His name is Jesus, and he wants to transform your life. And we just believe many did. Jesus came down into our cold and callous and cruel world to welcome us into his warm, acceptable, and loving world. He says, welcome to my world, Jesus says. Why don't you come on in? That's what Christmas means for heaven. What does Christmas mean for earth? Well, Christmas means we can come in if we're caught in the glitches and clutches of sin. I kind of touched on that already. It's so cold out there living in sin. The effects are shivering. The actions are chilling. The dispositions are freezing. I remember what it was like in my rebellious, wayward, wandering, sinful years, how callous and cold I was. I'll never forget the moment that the morning when my sister was heading off to Bible college. And my bedroom was in the basement. Everyone get up early to see my sister off the first year in Bible college, 1,100 miles from Truro, Nova Scotia, in Peterborough, Ontario. And she came, I didn't even want to get up out of bed. So she came down and she said, Gary, I'm leaving. I'll never forget this. I'm not proud of this at all. But she came down and shook me and said, Gary, I'm leaving. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Gary, I'm going, I'm going. I won't say, yeah, 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 yeah. And she walked out of my room bawling and crying. I was so callous, so callous. That's what sin does. Sin is cold and sin is callous and makes you do things that normally you wouldn't do and I often think about that, and I'm I just so sorry that I was so cold to my sister going off to Bible college, and I could not even be bothered to get out of bed. Leave me alone. My dad often told me, too, he said, Gary, you wouldn't want to know me before I found Christ. Cold, calloused, no love, no warmth. Oh, I'm so glad that if we're caught in the glitches and clutches of sin that we can come on in. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 invites us to come on in boldly, to find grace and help in our time of need. And we have needs we can come right into his throne room and we say, here I am, Lord. I'm out here in the cold, but I want to come under the warmth of your reception. You've got a marvelous warm reception for me. I want to come in. Oh, she'll give birth to a son. You'll call him Jesus. 1 John 1 and 9, if we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many times do we come to Jesus? As many times as we need to. As many times as we feel the coldness of sin gripping us, and we start shivering out there. We know, we know, we know, we know we've got to come in to the throne room. We've got to find our spot before the king. We've got to find ourselves and kneel before him and say, I need the warmth of your forgiveness. I was caught in the clutches and glitches of sin, but I need Jesus. I need the warmth of your spirit. I need the warmth of forgiveness. Christmas is about us experiencing the warmth Mankind experiencing the warmth of Jesus and his love and his forgiveness, no matter what we've done. That's what Christmas means for earth. Christmas also means for earth that we can come in if we're troubled. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 3 tells us that King Herod was troubled at the birth of Jesus. He was troubled. Because he felt threatened. Oh, someone's saying there's a new king to be born. There's a king, new kid, a new kid in town, as the song says like that. But there's a king, and he felt threatened. He's going to steal my kingdom. I'm not happy about this new king. I'm not happy. I'm troubled. And the Bible says not only was he troubled, but he had all of Jerusalem troubled alongside with him. Herod could have come in. He could have chose to come in on the inside. He could have come into the warmth. He could have gathered around the manger like so many others did. 
He could have embraced the baby Jesus. He could have worshipped him. He could have received him. But he chose to stay outside in trouble land. He chose to remain in a distraught condition. I wonder this morning, what is it that's troubling you? This Christmas season, what is it that's bothering you, that, that's, that's um, keeping you bound up and you just are troubled and there's unrest? I just encourage you this morning, don't stay outside with King Herod. Don't stay outside in the cold with him. And I also want to remind you that there is a ripple effect. When we are troubled and when we're outside in the cold and troubled land, there's a ripple effect. Our family feels it. Our friends feel it. Our relatives feel it. We have a disposition. We have something that we give off. Part of us. Don't stay out in trouble then. Try worship. But you say, but I don't understand what I'm going through. Try worship. But I, it's not clear. Try worship. But I've been through some hard. Try worship. But I feel like I've been unjust. Try worship. But you don't know what I've been through. Try worship. Just lay those things down. Lay those things aside and say, I don't understand. I know that things have happened to me that were unfair and it doesn't seem right. But this Christmas season, even though I don't understand and I'm troubled, I'm going to worship the Lord. Just try worship. Try surrender. Try the warm, loving arms of Jesus Try recognizing that a king has been born. Try giving your troubles away to King Jesus. Say, Lord, I give it to you. Oh, I give it to you. Oh, if Christmas means anything, it means that we can come on in when there's trouble. Trouble. Christmas also means that we can come on in if we're confused. Joseph made his way in, didn't he? He wrestled with confusion at first. Oh, imagine what was going through his mind. They're not married, and Mary's pregnant. Imagine trying a man trying to process that. Mary was just as confused as he was. But Joseph, you can imagine him going, how could you? Going to Mary and saying, how could you? And then Mary's saying, but I'm still a virgin. Some does not compute here, what Joseph is thinking. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21 says, after he considered this, there's a lot of things that goes on in my mind as I think about that process between here and here in Joseph's mind. After he considered this, how long? But after he considered this, then an angel came and said, take her as your wife because that which is conceived in Mary is from the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that? The angel said, just take her as your wife. Joseph never fully understood it, but despite that, despite him not understanding it, he was still invited to come on in and experience the warmth of God having everything under control. He was invited to come in and let God do a miracle. He was invited to open up to the possibilities of God. That's good guidance if we're out in confusion land. My wife and I often laugh because I proposed to her that I was in confusion land. I remember that night, that day. I don't even know what, what time of the day it was, but I was in confusion land, so I phoned my mother that night and said, Mom, I don't know what I've done, but I think I just got engaged. Do you think? I don't know. I, I'm in confusion land. You know, my, my, my mother had never met Lana. You know, my mother said to me, mothers know God, and they know futures. They know their sons. They know everything. She said, you, my mother said, you marry her. Mom, you don't even know. You never met her. I just know. You marry her. Then an angel came and said, take her as your wife. My mother kind of Maybe an angel came to my mother, but I, all I know is my mother put me at rest. My mother just knows. Mothers know everything. My mother has a, was a, it was a good choice. My mother made from Saskatoon to Nova Scotia, all those miles in between. I came out of confusion land and into the warmth of a loving wife. This is just for my wife this morning. 
Well, no, Christmas also means that we can come in if we struggle with faith in the promises of God. It also means that we can come in from that coldness that's found in doubt. It's bitterly cold out there living in faithless land. Joseph didn't stay out there. Did he come in quickly? Well, Matthew 1, 24 says, when Joseph woke up, when he woke up, he woke up from a good night's sleep. Did he wake up after 24 days of confusion? I don't know. But he woke up. There was a point in time when he came to his awareness, and he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary as his wife. He ventured on in faith, the faith of God, faith in God, faith in his word, faith in what God said would happen, just being obedient. It's cold out there in faithless land. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. They're yes in Christ. 2 Peter 1 and verse 4 says, He's given us His great and precious promises. And Christmas means that we can come on in from the struggle of doubts. Because we all at times struggle with having faith in the promises of God, what God's Word has said. Does he, what he said mean and apply to me and what I'm going through and in my life? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Christmas means come on in. If you struggle with doubt, if we live life on the outside in faithless land, the promises of God will be our stumbling blocks as we doubt our way through life. But if we live life on the inside in faith land, the promises of God will be our stimulation blocks as we believe our way through life. I want to believe my way through life. So this morning, Christmas is about time, time and warmth. The time came, and I'm glad the time came for you and I, and warmth, the warmth of the season. To come on in. And so I, I encourage you this Christmas season to come on in all over again. That's what this Advent is all about, too. The candles, they remind us, and the heat and the warmth. They say that uh, one candle can light up an entire room, and it can almost feel warm. And you sit by a fireplace, you, you see the light, and you feel the warmth. And this Advent is about us choosing to receive Christ all over again, the warmth of the season. And that's my challenge for you this morning. Worship team, you can come. Just to come on in. If you have questions in your mind, lay them to rest. Set them aside and say, but I just want to receive the warmth of Christmas. It meant so much for heaven. He gave up. He came down. And it means so much to earth because he came to me. He came to rescue me. He came to my domain. He came to my address. He came to my house. He came to my car. He came to where I was standing. And he wants to speak to us afresh this Christmas season. Let's stand together. So, Lord, I pray for my friends this morning. I thank you for this marvelous Christmas season. And as we approach the miracle day of December 25. We approach it reverently. We approach it sincerely. We approach it, Lord, just like it was the very first time. I pray, God, for fresh revelation today. I pray, God, even though for some of us it might have been 70 Christmas. 75 Christmases or 80 Christmases or 60 or 50 or 40. It doesn't matter how many years that we've experienced Christmas. We can experience it like it's the first time. And we thank you, God, for sending Jesus. And we worship you. We adore you. And we just invite you, Jesus, to make a difference in our lives. We invite you, Lord, to come in, transform us afresh. 
oh, clean us up for a brand new year. Set us up for a brand new year. Prepare us for a brand new year that's before us, a brand new season. I thank God of the losses we've gone through this past year. Loss of relatives, maybe loss of a spouse, loss of a child. Oh, God, a new year is before us. And with you by our side, we can survive. We can go forward. And I thank you, Lord, today for your promises. In Christ's name, as you're standing, you sing a song of conclusion. If you'd like, like to receive ministry this morning, if you'd like someone to agree with you in prayer, I invite you just to step out and make your way down to the front. And following the song that we sing, Pastor Gary will close the service. Thank you so much for coming.